Hey kids, you're about to listen to a comedy podcast. That means that none of this is medical advice. If you need medical advice or medical care, please contact your doctor. Welcome to the Jock Doc Podcast featuring Dr. London Smith. We've got a good one for you today, folks. What? I said we've got a good one for you today. What? I said we've got a good one for you today, folks. Yeah! Introducing your host, Dr. London Smith. Hello. And welcome to the Jock Doc Podcast, where we discuss fitness and health and how to incorporate our modern understanding of science and medicine into our daily lives, but without it being so boring. I'm your host, Dr. London Smith. Com. I'd like to begin by apologizing to our listeners. We've received some feedback about the excessive amount of technical medical terms that I've been using, such as chromosomal aneuploidy and she sells she oh, see she. Oh. She sells seashells by the seashore. See, and I'm sorry. So I will try to temper my terminology to a simpler one in the future. Here to help with that is our producer, Cameron. Hello, Dr. London. Uh, Hello to you. Um, Yes, uh, you seem kind of, you know, chipper today. Are you doing better? I think I am in a pretty good mood. Okay. I just, I've been, I'm, you know, I've been sort of on the side in a secret project, been working on a script lately, um, and I've just finished it, and I think it's going to be really, really, really good. Wow, great. And it's going to be, it's going to be a full-length mini-series adaptation of the Twisted Transistor music video by Korn from, like, 2005. Yeah, Okay. Where it's just it's yeah. just like they got like Lil John and like what? people who vaguely look like the guys from Corn to dance around. Okay, and so Little John, yeah! that's going to be a ten episode FX on Hulu show. That's the goal. Okay, and yeah! so you've you've written the the screenplay for this. Yes, and it's good, Doctor London. And you are famously your own worst critic. Oh yes, I hate everything that I write. Yeah. And so this is the first thing. Well, I'm, you know, I'm glad you've really made this progress to to liking something of yourself because, you know, you've you've talked about your therapist kind of gets on to you about how you should like more of your own things and not be so unhappy with yourself. Uh, I think he's and, just trying to sell my stuff. You know what I mean? Like he's just trying to get a sale out of it. Okay. Because so, I think he'll get commission off of like selling me my own material. Okay, I get. Yeah, I guess, you know, therapy works differently for different people. And I, I never thought of therapy as being a chance for your therapist to... Just make a sale. St- yeah, make a sale. Okay. Pick up some of that commission. Well, anyway, that's, it's great. I mean, the only little John that I'm familiar with is, you know, from Robin Hood. Uh, but is that... Um, you don't know the rapper Lil John? What? Uh, is, is he... The king of 13 years ago is? What? Well, I'm like I think that I am. I think I'm following it, but like well, like 17 years ago, God. Is he? Yeah! He's from Robin Hood. Is that right? I would have to check, but I'm gonna say yeah. For the sake okay. of speeding up this conversation, I'm gonna say absolutely. Okay. Yeah, that's just I, I'm just trying to get you know my frame of reference there. Uh, so anyway, that, that's our producer. So yeah, Cameron. he's the big bear from. Uh, yeah. Robin Hood, the Disney's animated Robin Hood. And so I've sort of adapting the Twisted Transistor music video into into that. And we've got Pedro Pascal attached. When you say we, and also when you say have, I... Oh, yeah, no, it's in my Google Doc. Okay, okay. Um. Anyway, so, so that's our producer, Cameron. Also with us is... Did you know in the house? Yeah! You don't know the rapper, Lil John? What? You don't know the rapper, Lil John? You don't know the rapper a little bit. What? You don't know the rapper a little bit. What? You don't know the rapper a little bit. You don't know the rap. You don't know the rap. You don't know the rap. You don't know the. You don't know the rapper a little bit. Yeah. You don't know the rapper a little bit. He's from Robin Hood, is that right? Yeah! Is he? And later, Cameron tells us that we can expect a special guest. That's right, Dr. London. Right, so so go ahead and look forward to that. Uh, but before we move on... I, I mean, maybe. I'm sorry? 
I don't know. I have no idea how the guest is going to be. I'm tired of of creating all these expectations, Doctor London. Yeah, you've been you've been really anti expectation lately. Mm-hmm. Anything where I I say like you will show up for the podcast recording, you 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 say no, don't don't put that on me. Well, I hate that at the end of episodes you tell people to like uh, follow our Twitter and like it, like the podcast on iTunes because I don't know if I'm going to delete those things between now and when the episode comes out. So I no, that's I, a lot of pressure on me. I should say right now I have stopped doing that. I actually have heard you. So this episode will not have that on it. Okay, um, great. Yeah, that's and I know that's been a pretty problem because you you don't like uh, you don't like us interacting with social media at all. And I get that. So Oh, I don't mind any of it. I've come around to it. It's just I know I don't know what's gonna happen, and so I might get the urge yeah. to delete everything, every evidence this podcast ever existed by like Thursday. Gotcha. Okay, so all right, but I said that's a producer camera. It's a lot of um, pressure to not I don't know if I'm gonna do that, and it's a lot of pressure to expect me to not do that. It's a lot of pressure to expect me to bathe and take care of myself. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's and I'm already dealing with that. Yeah, and you, you are continually frustrated. Once again, your your therapist, you talk a lot about. Anyway, I don't want to get into your personal life too much. You know, um, before we move on, I would like to address a bit of listener feedback. So we were hosting an intervention for my cousin, and we got a good deal on this banner because it had this note written on the back. Mm-hmm. And so I assume that this note um, that was written on the back is listener feedback for the podcast. The The note reads, quote, boss makes a dollar, I make a dime, that's why I poop on company time. End quote. Thank you to this listener for reaching out. So our listener sent in like an old union rhyming adage? As, yes. You know, I I don't ask our listeners where they, um you know, where they get their information. I You think that, Maybe that's a lesson that has, uh, or maybe um, a rule that hasn't been figured out yet. You know, the fact that maybe I make more than you on the podcast. Which you don't, but yeah. Well, since I'm the host, you're the producer, I, I'm going to make a little bit more. I'm the talent, you know. Yeah, if if that's what you think is happening, I love that. That's awesome. If that's what you believe the split of this podcast is, that's great for me. Okay, because the Patreon has been you maybe maybe I'll maybe this listener has some something worth hearing. Okay. Um. Anyway, uh, to this listener, thank you so much for reaching out, and uh, yeah, for, for for letting me know that maybe maybe I should be aware of of who's making what here. So um. Anyway, now for today's medical topic, Wilson disease. Wilson, di- and this is not Mister Wilson disease. Like Dennis the Medicine, all that. This isn't any of that. Um, yeah, this is the volleyball. Okay. No, it's also so, so. So Wilson disease is a cause of liver or hepatic cirrhosis. Um, oh no. It, yeah, Wilson disease is an autosomal recessive disease of copper metabolism. So mutations in the ATP7B gene lead to an impairment of copper excretion because it cannot be excreted. Copper accumulates in liver cells as hepatocytes. Yeah. What was that? It must be really hard for him to know that, that he's like causing that in everyone he interacts with. You know what I mean? You talk, you're talking about the... Like, you don't, no one wants to admit that they're a burden on their friends and family. Right. But it sounds like this Wilson character, you know, is just destroying people's livers. The volleyball? Yeah. So, and once again, I need to clarify, this is, this is a disease. This isn't... Um... This is not the volleyball. This is just a guy you know, Wilson. No, well, it's it's a in any case, it's um. So as as hepatocytes or liver cells as they die, copper leaks into plasma and accumulates in various organs, including the kidneys, cornea, and brain. The majority of cases present between the ages of five and thirty-five. Uh, so clinical features are due to copper deposition in various organs, liver disease, which is the most common initial manifestation. It can include uh, acute hepatitis, cirrhosis, and ful- uh, fulminant hepatic failure. Uh, a big thing for Wilson disease is Kaiser Fleischer rings, which are yellow, uh, golden yellowish rings in the cornea of the eye. And that's caused by, once again, copper deposition. 
And it's like, just because he causes all these different things and the people around him doesn't mean you need to place all the blame on him. You know what I mean? Like, I think that can be sort of detrimental to his health, his mental health and his self-image. Yeah, I feel like he thinks like, oh, everyone around me has these like yellow eyes. Yeah, that's going to make you feel bad. So I, I just don't. And maybe that's not your place to say like who does and doesn't make everyone else sick. Okay, and one th- one thing to clarify regarding that copper deposition in the eye and the cornea, um, it doesn't interfere with vision. People can see fine. It's it's an outward thing that you can just see on their eyes. Uh, central nervous system findings are due to copper deposition in the central nervous system. One aspect of this can be extrapyramidal signs, including Parkinsonian sim- uh, symptoms, such as resting tremor, rigidity, and bradykinesia. Uh, other extrapyramidal signs can include chorea, which is a term for when the hands shake in a specific involuntary way. Um, they can have drooling and incoordination due to copper deposition in the basal ganglia of the brain. Psychiatric disturbances may also be present, including depression. And even just stuff like that just seems rude to me. Like you're you're accusing him of some sort of impropriety just because he wants to like have a handshake. You're saying, oh, this handshake is unsolicited, so that means you're just an evil person? Dr. London. No, so the so the handshaking part is is Corey. It's it's due to, you know, the nerves working improperly. Yeah, I'm sure he's nervous if you're gonna just throw it back in his face like that. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So um so so psychiatric disturbances, it can cause neuroses, personality changes, psychosis, uh, kidney involvement can manifest with uh, aminoaciduria and nephrocalcinosis. Um, in any case, a diagnosis is made by determining a few factors. Liver disease can be revealed with elevated liver function tests, along with um, impaired synthesis of coagulation factors and proteins such as albumin. Uh, these are things that the liver normally does: is make those coagulation factors and, and albumin. Uh, the most obvious method to screen for Wilson disease is, of course, by finding a decreased serum copper level, which is measured with serum ceruloplasmin. Yeah, it's not like you can just talk to him like he's an actual human being. You have to put him through all these tests or whatever just to get the results you want. Well, so that's so, what you guys do. So this is... T- the idea of just like, oh, just like, oh, I'm going to like talk to this person and treat him like an actual human. That's just a foreign concept to pill pushers like yourself. And that's fine. And you can admit it. And you need to admit it. Yeah, so this is... Admit it. Admit that I, I, I just you feel push like pills on Wilson. So, Say it. So Wilson isn't a patient of mine. Maybe I should clarify that. Oh, he's a friend. That's even worse. No, it, <sighs> he's just reaching out to talk, Doctor London. He's calling you on the phone, and you're trying to sell him scripts on the side. So, so this decrease in copper in the plasma is seen in ninety percent of Wilson disease patients. Although ranging within. Uh, ranges within normal do not exclude the diagnosis. And of course, the most direct way to just, uh, to diagnose is with the liver biopsy. And that can show elevated copper concentration in liver cells. If diagnosed, you'll want to check the first degree relatives. Screen them because this is a genetic disease. Now, Oh, it's, so it's not even bad enough that you're putting him through this, but you're putting his family through this as well. And I just, I feel like you're really missing the whole... Uh, main like the it's genetic disease, so it's not even contagious, like you were. Sa- In any case, th- there are a few treatment options available. Uh, chelating agents like D-penicillamine. Now you're saying you shouldn't even have kids. Remove and detoxify the excess copper deposits. Zinc prevents the uptake of dietary copper. This can be given alone in pre-symptomatic or pregnant patients or in conjunction with chelating agents in symptomatic patients. If patients are unresponsive to therapy or have fulminant liver failure, a liver transplant may be necessary. And in general, one should monitor the patient's copper levels, uh, the urinary copper excretion, the ceruloplasmin, the liver function, along with physical exam for signs of liver neurologic disease and, of course, psychological health. So, did that make you feel better? I, so this that is you got all that out of your system. It's you know it's one of those things that people can really watch out for if they have some symptoms. You know what I mean? If they have a friend who's sort of causing these kind of things in I, in their lives, and just so blasted so, on a podcast. So in your mind, after all that I said, your assumption is still that Wilson. Uh-huh. The volleyball with a bloody handprint on it from the movie Castaway mm-hmm. has 
a contagious, severe liver and neurological and psychological and kidney disease. Mm-hmm. That's why it's so small. Uh, you know, let's can, can we move on from here? I feel like we're yeah, that's fine. I feel like we're at an impasse. All right, uh, Cameron, you said that we have a guest today. Is that right? That's correct, Dr. London. Okay, and and you you don't mind the expectation. He, we have a guest here, and that's okay, I think. We have a guest, and that's all I'm going to say. I think setting any other expectation is rude, Dr. London, on me. Okay, so um, anyway, uh, hello there. My name is Dr. London Smith, .com, and this is our producer, Cameron. What was your name? My name is uh, Junior. Junior. Junior, uh, Junior the fifth Cameron. Oh, so you you come from the Cameron clan as well. Yeah, you can say that. Yeah, I'm, I'm the fifth. So yeah. So you guys, do you guys hang? Do you know each other? Do you hang out? I mean, uh, we have never met. No, it, we did. I invited him on the podcast because I had seen him. Sort of like at a like in line at an Arby's that was closed down. Mm-hmm. I thought that was really interesting because like who else loves Arby's as much as I do? Wait, he was in and line, like I closed one. Yeah, well, because that's how he yeah. was waiting for it to open. Okay, was was there a line and he was not even the first in line or? Uh, I was the first in line. Yeah, I I'm the line starter. Okay, he, the the same way that people might camp out for tickets. Like concert tickets or movie tickets or whatever sneakers, that's, jewelry, yeah. yeah. So I, that, that that's what he was doing with sort of his morning big beef and cheddar. I guess this is the part that's whatever you say. I invited a, him on the podcast, but whatever you say, a line. It, I, I'm sorry to get hung up on this, but whatever you say, a line. It makes me think more than one person. Like you know, more than one dot makes a line. So I'm wondering, was he the only one in line? We're getting into the differences between the first and second dimension. Yes. A point versus a line. That is interesting. Yeah. And I am, I'm open to talking about it. I mean, but the line has to start somewhere and yes. I was the first in yeah. line. No, and I think, I feel like that's, you know, you've established that, but I'm wondering what I'm getting at is, was there anyone else waiting at this Arby's? Oh, with you? no. I, I mean, me. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so two people make a line. Two people make a line. We were both there, and so I invited him on the podcast because he seemed like he had a lot of good ideas. Okay, and well, he, and yes. he had some he had some questions for you, Doctor London. Some medical questions. I do, but I'm still uh, I I need to know that you understand the line thing. So you're at a wedding, and you want to start dancing. You want to start a conga line. I do. I do. And you get up and you start dancing. It's still a conga line, whether someone is behind you or not. Are you? Yes. And if there's only two people, it might look like just someone is holding on to someone else's butt, but it's actually a conga line. I've seen so many, you know, whenever, I, whenever I've gone to clubs before, I've seen so mm-hmm. many two-person conga lines. Yeah, they're very popular at, uh, at, at clubs. Yeah. yeah. Um, so two people just grinding on each other, it's a conga line. I guess. I, I, but how that, are you I, confused I, about this, Dr. London? Yeah, I get that you're a medical expert. Like, I'm learning oh, is, is what... It, I ju- I'm just speaking out loud what I'm learning right now. We've established on the show many times he is a moron in anything that doesn't involve medicine. Which, and so, to be fair, that is the most flattering thing you've said on this podcast to, to, to yeah. say that I do know medicine. Yeah. So thank you. You, you definitely know about it. Like, you've heard of it. Yeah, or just you know maybe talked about a genetic disease just now but anyway um so uh you you guys met in line at an arby's and uh th- that's and that's how this got going so mm-hmm. um so junior the fifth uh and i'm sorry to to kind of get hung up on these things before we even really start to get to know why you're here but um i so normally there's a junior and a senior in a family yeah. are you was there like a a senior in your family and then a junior of the, I I'm, I guess I'm not sure I'm not a junior version yeah. of anyone. No, I get it. I mean, uh, again, it's, it's just genetics and leniency, like uh, the lineage, right? It starts with a line. So where am I in that line? Yes. Right. So there was my father, and his father before him, 
and his father before him. Which one was a senior? Then, uh, huh? Well, oh, this the first the first senior. So I had I became a junior on my mother's side. Okay. Oh. Yeah, but I'm a fi- I'm a fifth on my dad's side. You're a maternal junior and a paternal fifth. The fifth. Okay. Yes. Okay. I guess this is you know. I, I I don't get into genealogy maybe as much as I should. This is actually this is a lot to learn. Okay, um, that's how, so I guess for the record, so it's out there. Um, I'm the f- I'm Doctor London Smith dot com the first. Mm-hmm. So uh, Cameron, do you want to go ahead and state? But just to yeah, let you know, I'm, I'm Cameron Clark, first of his name. Very nice. And just to let you both know, that means that you're still the first in line. Yes. And they and the long lineage of my future children, who will all be named Cameron. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Junior the fifth. What what brings you to the podcast? Yeah. Uh, thank you so much. So uh, as uh, we stated, waiting for an Arby's. Right. It was after a um, a night of uh, debauchery. Um, it's gonna say it plain and simple. I'm a jewel thief. Right. Okay. And yeah, and I was getting off a job. Just uh, had uh, hit hit up Zales. Got a great. Uh, a big score, right? And but of course, with every job comes, um, you know, some difficulties, which you know sometimes pertains to oh, yeah. HR, fights, payroll, whatever, gunfights, uh, some violence. Okay, so I, and, I was thinking HR, but so gunfights. Yeah, and I was thinking I was talking to Cameron, and he let me know about the podcast because I was wounded at the time, so I was waiting for my big beef and cheddar. And I said, man, I can't wait to get this inside of me because I'm losing a lot of blood and I need something to uh, help me out here. Yeah, I see. Yeah, to replace the blood with. Yeah. I mean, I do see you're bleeding, but it looks like you got a, what, what looks like makeshift bandages, which, well, it looks like attempted makeshift bandages. You have a... Uh, with the roast yeah. beef. Yeah, and the swimming yes. tube that's deflated. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, I mean, I'm, no, I'm no medical expert, so I'm like... You know, I wanted to come on this podcast, uh, see how you can help me, see if there's any, like, uh, quick, you know, how-tos as I'm on the run. You know, I can't, I can't go to a hospital because I think I'm, there's going to be pictures of me on there. Okay. So. so you're you're coming here in part because you fear the law, the lawmen coming after you. Uh, yeah, coming, coming after me, yeah. Not fear them. I told them that... You would do. You'd be willing to do some stuff on the side. Yeah. Well, so I do the podcast on the side. I don't normally yeah. provide medical treatment on the side. Oh, uh, th- why not? There's. It's a big market. Yeah. I mean, do you take cryptocurrency? I mean, I could shoot you a, a few bits, a few bits of a coin. Okay. <laughs> that's you know that that's appealing in a way, but like I, I f- I'd rather go through the proper channels, but. I mean, I guess, you know, while you're here... What What is more... I mean, people say proper. Okay, a hundred years ago, where was everyone operating in a hospital? No, everyone was in their grass huts, and we were all just operating on each other in our own beds. And it's just like, that's not unethical to do things on your own time, Dr. London. So, I mean, what is what is more above board than bringing some people who have been recently shot into your home, patching them up and then pretending to be like a vet or something. Yeah. No, that's, um, no, that, that's, that's one approach. So I guess I, first off, let's, uh, let's, let's look at, you know, the first thing we do in medicine, you, you enter a room, you'll, well, you'll, before you enter a room, you, you would knock. You wait, and, do you, you knock at the hospital? Yes. You, you always, you always knock before you enter a patient's room. Sorry. I haven't been to one in so long. I can't, I can't remember how the, what the protocol yeah, is. And normally, well, you're supposed to knock. People don't, you're supposed to knock at the front door of the hospital. It's usually like a sliding door, but you're supposed to, just because it slides open doesn't mean you're allowed in. Okay. So you're knock, 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 doctor, doctor. Yeah, you have to be invited tell in. Tell me the new, yeah. yeah, it's vampire okay. rules. And um, then they're usually going to give you like a little device thingy that'll buzz. Like the hostess will give you a thing that'll that'll buzz whenever you're yeah, ready. Looks like a coaster. And then in that 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 free time is yours. You can go next door. There's a Brookshire's next door. There's all sorts of things that you can do. Yeah, laser tag place. So, I've been to a hospital in forever, so this is all this is all news to me. I'm I'm writing this down right now. Yeah, you know, I would say Just, you know 
all the stuff that's outside the hospital that he was mentioning, you don't have to go to a hospital to access a grocery store, you know, like Brookshire's. You don't, you can just go to the Brookshire's. Uh, you know, if there's, now, now one thing I, um, I, it's just, all of this seems like you're just avoiding the question of why won't you help this yeah, man? And yeah. why won't you help other people who might well not want to go to a hospital? Okay. So I'm, you know, learning basic first aid is, is valuable. Okay. So, mm-hmm. um, okay. So, so I'm looking at your leg right now. Sorry. I was, that's what I was saying. I was saying you knock first and then once you're invited in, then you observe, you look. And so this is what we call the gross exam. So I'm looking at you and I do see that your leg is uh, um, in, I guess you've, you've put your foot into a balloon. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, protection. It's like a, like a condom esque. Yeah. You know, it's, I couldn't find a condom big enough. So I used the next big thing. Yeah. The next uh, thing is a, a balloon. Yeah. So you've, you've got this balloon I, and then i see that the balloon you've been changing it out even while we've talking we've been talking you've, you've been pulling off the balloon tying it off because it's filled with fluids and then i see you've got a collection next to you you've of, got a bucket yeah that you keep yeah. putting them in yeah. and that i assume i mean you're turning them into water balloons and we're gonna have a, a like a play fight later right you know that was supposed to be a surprise i told you uh, I, I, I okay the, I, as a surprise for you, Doc. Yeah. So, so if it's if it's you know pus and blood, then that's filling those balloons. Then that's not something that I would. Th- th- that'd be a negative type of surprise. You for are me. so holier than thou. You're so snooty. Yeah, yes. You still won't treat me. I mean, can you just? Uh, what do you have here? Can you just get something to just yeah. uh, sew me up? So, or yeah. So would you mind? Um. Well, first of all, would you mind just let's remove the. Uh, we have the, to remove the leg? The foot, no, no, hey, the foot condom. Let's remove that. Okay. Okay, so that is spurting. You okay. just want them to raw dog it like so that? I, so let's, um, I, I've got, I'll start suturing. Well, we have to clean it. Um, okay. And it's it's really going, so let's apply pressure. That's really the thing to okay. do here. Okay, yeah. Hey, I just want to let you know that you're doing it right now. You are working on my leg. Even after all your hesitation, even after... You have to knock and all the protocol. You completely abandoned all that. And I want to thank you for that. Yeah, I, well, it's one of those, I mean, if you are dying here, which you might have been with all this blood loss. Uh, was, no, I had, a be- I, I had a big beef and cheddar. I'm not dying. Yeah. I mean, you t- you look so pale. But, okay. Well, I mean, but if the blood has been replaced with, a, you know, a whole meal. Arby sauce. Arby sauce. And that goopy cheddar cheese, I mean. Yeah, you have been just downing shots of that that Arby sauce. But you said we're supposed to put pressure on it, Doctor London. Yeah, onto the the wound where where the blood's spurting out. Okay, uh, okay. Where were you the other night? Is that what we're supposed to do? I put, no, it's just, tell me where you were. Okay, so, so junior. We're gonna, so I've got gauze. We're gonna put that on there. Um, no. Okay. So you're gonna get into a grade eight college next year, or you're not my son anymore. Is it applying pressure to yourself? No. Oh. Okay. I mean, it, it was. I was thinking to my leg. I, I think of my leg as a separate entity as uh, than myself. Are you your leg's dad, Junior? Yes. I, I I am my leg's dad, so that makes my leg. Uh, junior the, the sixth. Fifth. No, the sixth. The fifth. The sixth. Junior the sixth. Okay. So it. You know, we'll. I feel like we've we've kind of slowed the bleeding on. Um, on your your foot so for one thing congratulations we we can move on from there for the moment uh and of maybe course, you can just give some general advice when he's on his next you know thieving caper yeah please i don't i don't want to have to come back every single time i'm just yeah. oh yeah of course like i'm sure i'm sure you probably cut your hands sometimes when you're when you're trying to go through glass that you've just broken right mm-hmm. yeah you'd think i'd bandage it up but i just raw fist because it's a it's about the feel of it you know you want to feel like oh, i'm robbing this place and i broke this glass exactly yeah because otherwise why are you doing it you know if you're just gonna like not even enjoy it, what you're doing yeah you don't want to be living for the weekend you want to mm-hmm. enjoy your your work um enjoy what you do and you'll never work another day in your life that's something that i said and i invented and so it is one of those things where it I don't know that this is um, one of the reasons why I haven't been addressing the job 
so specifically is because I'm not sure that I would morally agree with the that job. Do you do you understand? Oh, well, uh, no. Please elaborate on why you wouldn't approve my job. So, um, whenever you, if your job is, you know, so, so I guess a lot. There are a lot of jobs in the world. You know, you can do. You can be a doctor. This is where you're starting. That's how broad your starting is just the concept of jobs and how many there are in the world. You can I think you can fast forward when, past yeah, that. No. When God created Earth, yes. right. he said, Let there be jobs. Yeah. So, and there were jobs. Okay. I guess I'm sorry, I, I was just trying to be sensitive and to kind of keep it broad and then narrow it. So, so Hit me with it. Okay. My leg is bleeding, I could die at any moment, as you said. That's true. I want you to just get to okay. it. Okay. We need to put more roast beef on it. Stealing is wrong. Yes. And so and uh the jewelry stores, you know, you're you're taking someone's profit, you're taking their items uh that that they acquired to sell. You're you're taking that away from them. So st- stealing is generally it's against the law and it's, you know, kind of a, you know, a, morally not a, not okay. So All right. Let me hit you back with this. Okay. All right. Ooh. Have you have, have you heard of the the GameStop uh, stock of of recent of recent uh, history? Well, it's yeah, it's been you know a month or two since that, but yeah. I still, I mean, it's still happening. There's still the hedge funds are still trying to like uh, hold on to their money, and they're uh, taking away their like uh, you know they're pretty much stealing money from the people who put on uh, who put the, uh, the shorts on there, the short squeeze. Right. And so you would you do you think they do you think uh, are we equal? Yeah. So, so you're comparing the, you know, a volatile, like some stock market exchange. Market manipulation. Some market yep. manipulation to your physically going to. Yes, I'm manipulating the diamond market. And the glass enclosures, breaking through the doors, picking the locks, smashing, grabbing. Moving through the lasers. I get. Yeah, what what is what is Junior doing if not just shorting the jewelry stock? And by stock we mean the the physical the number of jewelry items. As yeah, opposed he's, to... he's 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 taking he's shorting that list. Okay, he's I... making that list much shorter. So this is a lot of moral relativism that I'm really not, you know. Le- so, so maybe leave philosophy to the philosophers who are us. Yeah, because it's so it's so uh, insulting that you would just judge before even hearing me out. I mean, from the get go, you yeah. you know, you're stealing, you're this, you're this kind of person, you're bleeding all over my floor, you know. You haven't even you told look, him what you do with the money you get. Yeah, you don't know what I do with the money. I I give a lot of it away. I give about ninety percent away of the diamonds. So if you ever see um, an unhoused person with diamond earrings or uh, some or um, jewelry that's me i whoa yeah okay so you you steal from the rich to give to the poor mm-hmm. not unlike i mean th- robin th- hood th- th- yes the trading app and a little john okay okay i yeah i i went to a different place in my but yeah, yeah yeah i follow okay so um now that we know so so you are stealing for to give to those in need. It doesn't sound like Junior's giving away like the money he makes from it. He's giving the diamonds away. And I say to them very close, and I'm like, you better not sell this. You better not, or I will come back. Okay, that was and I will That was gonna be my next question. You you forbid them from and it sounds like you were threatening them? Yes. I say this is only to look good. This is for appearances only, okay? And if I come back here and I see that you sold this, we're going to have a problem on our hands. Huh. And Dr. Okay. London has an issue with this. I don't know why. He has this moral issue with everything that's going on. Where do you get off? I mean, did you study philosophy or did you study medicine? Yeah, I. it's it's one of those things. Yeah, where maybe like... a pill pusher shouldn't be telling people how to live their lives. Yeah, I, I bet you I bet you only treat people with insurance. <laughs> Ooh, busted. With a, a, a Kaiser Permanente insurance. Busted. The, yeah, the Kaiser Flesher rings. I, uh, so, um, ding, 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 ding. We got him, boys. Bringing the SWAT team. So I... 
That's we, me shooting you. That is me killing you. Yeah, I I could tell by the the very angry face you just made and the very genuine rage. So, um, I if we could take it back to the question I had, which was, what brought you to this life of stealing from the rich to make the less fortunate look good under th- threat of harm? Yeah, um, I grew up uh, very poor, and I could never figure out how to make myself look good until I saw this ad for, uh, I don't know if you've heard of the company uh, K Jewelers? Yes, yeah, that's a yeah. famous jewelry store. Every kiss begins with K. Mm-hmm. Yep. Right? And I saw that commercial and I said to myself, I need, that's that's how I do it. That's how I do it. They had this beautiful Christmas commercial. They looked so nice. And then I found out the actors weren't that rich. And I was like, oh, wait, if the actors aren't that rich, but they can make themselves look good, so can I. Okay. So your origin story is that you saw jewels on TV and then decided to that you wanted them, basically. Yeah. That's pretty good. If you, if you want to if you want to strip it down if you want to strip down my oh, beautiful I'm story. Oh, I'm not trying to yeah. minimize yeah, your experience or anything like that. So this is this is your first job. What? Uh yeah, I guess you can say it's my first job. I mean, can you really call it a job if you love doing it? Yeah, it's not a job, Dr. London. Okay, I'm sorry. It's just we had We the... just established that and we established that I made that up. I invented that saying. So okay, so you've been I guess whenever I was, I was hope a part of me I guess at least was hoping that maybe um you had fallen on to hard times you'd been driven to a life of crime but it sounds like you you just kind of got jealous of people looking really good in a commercial and wanted to imitate that Well and it imitate. sounds like you yeah were upset with how the the like homeless people around you looked and even the wow. actors not being rich was a yeah, it was a huge SWAT, selling point for you. Uh, the SWAT team's turning on me. Pow, 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 pow. Wow, I'm being shot right right now. I I apologize. I I am not. I ever. I think I support everything that you're doing. I was just correcting Doctor London. He was trying to present it as, oh, he was. You know, uh, Junior here is just trying to make himself look good. He was just jealous, and it's like, no, he is making the people around him look better. I didn't realize I was part of a luau since I'm getting roasted over here. Right. <laughs> Busted. Busted. Got me. Bring in the SWAT team. Yeah, I, I don't get why you would come what you why you would come after me specifically. How poor I mean, were you? Um uh, my father could only afford two Hummers. Oh man. I know. So I mean do you guys know do you do you know how that is do you know how that feels when people around you are, are driving Escalades and Lamborghinis and going to private schools? And you're just going to a a different private school? Yeah. Man. Yeah, I mean, I can't even imagine. I would turn to a life of crime too, Dr. Lidded. How can we judge? Yeah. yeah. And then you can only, you can, your dad can only buy, buy you, uh, buy you, uh, buy your spot in like a state school instead of a, another like, like Duke or an Ivy League school. Yeah, I guess I didn't think of, you know, it's one of those things where people say, you know, uh, these people you see live a life of privilege or this one. And the people who seem to be living a life of privilege from their own point of view, they're just trying to get by like anyone else sometimes. And maybe it was inconsiderate of me to, you know, assume that he wasn't so poor. Yeah. But did you, did you ever consider another job like, you know, an accountant being an accountant or being a doctor being, you know, what, what did your dad do? To, what did your father do to have all the... Uh, my, oh, my dad, mm-hmm. yes. Um, my dad was a jeweler. Oh. oh. Yes. So this is sort of a... Is your dad still around? You say was a jeweler. Yes, he's no longer around. I, uh, I'll be honest with you guys. I, uh, that, was the first, uh, that was the first store I, I robbed. Wait. Did you rob it while he was still alive? I mean, legally, legally, I can't say anything according to my friend who uh, sub uh, who uses the subreddit law. Wait, and you know, 
I'm sorry. I've, like, it, legally, I can't tell you what happened on that fateful night where I took. But it sounds like he he might have been alive the day before this day you started thieving, or even and the then day was of. not the day after. Is that is that about is that about right? I think so. I think I think um, the shock of uh, finding out what my career was is what uh, might have had a your, might have uh, affected your you career, know? which yeah. started at that time. Yes. It's so crazy. Actually, like it, it's he. He passed away at the same time I was picking up, picking up my first diamond. That is crazy. It's you wouldn't it's believe a it. Huge it's a, coincidence, yeah. And you're referring to it as a career now, where I was being really called out for calling it a job. It, was that the issue? Was the longevity aspect? No, I, I think I, I'm saying career. Because I just want to speak in your terms. Okay. It's for you to understand. Because, again, you didn't understand the whole line thing. And now I'm like, okay, well, I have to, like, shift a little bit so you understand. Yeah. LeBron LeBron still has career highlights, even though no one says, like, oh, playing for the Lakers is LeBron's job. Okay. See what I mean? Wait. but, But do you consider being a jewelry thief to be similar in that way to playing for it's the not Lakers. a job if you love it yeah oh, okay okay right, right, right. but i do consider myself the goat if that's what you're gonna get i am you think you're the, the lebron of jewel thievery yes how many scores have you done i mean you know give or take i'm gonna say about three okay and were they huge hauls to how, how, how many how much how many diamonds did you walk away with? Okay, if I'm really thinking about it, because I mean, who keeps track of this stuff? Honestly, if I'm just thinking about it, and I, yeah, especially so if much, you're not an accountant or anything, yeah, yeah, and you're just you know doing the numbers in your head, and you know you're thinking, it's give or take, give or take five, yeah, five. So five diamonds total over the three trips, or five each time. Over the five trips. Oh, okay. Okay, so you've had five, and you gave 90% of those five to the poor people. Um, we, so, and look, I... So it's I, four, what, a four and a half? And look, look, do you want to know where I keep it? <laughs> no, look. that's that's not what I was... Oh, uh, no, that's not what I was asking. No, look! It's, look at it. Uh, look at it. Okay, yeah, well, it's okay. That's where you keep the half diamond that his, you kept. His nipple piercing is filled with a half diamond. Um, Jealous? I'm Honestly, whenever you started pulling off clothes, I, I am relieved that it was just the nipple. Uh, you know what you should do is you should do the little Uzi Vert thing and get your next diamond right in your forehead. Well, you next. I'll think about it, but then, then I, I, I like to keep clothes on because... Then it's a little covert, so people won't be like, hey, where'd you get that diamond? And then do this whole like interrogation, and then I'd have to be like, oh, what? Yeah, you know. you'd have to become a famous rapper to sort of cover your tracks. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's why people get into it. Yep. Well, okay, so j- just to kind of give a recap, recap of my understanding of your, I guess, life, Junior the Fifth Cameron, you, yeah, you gr- grew up, your family was a... Uh, owned a jewelry store one day you decided to rob his jewelry store your father died that night possibly related to it and you robbed a few other jewelry stores since then totally you came out with five diamonds gave the away same jewelry store. yeah gave away sorry you robbed the same store yeah still your dad's store yeah Who who's working there now now that your father has passed my mom and my brothers okay are they okay it's the i don't know okay but nothing are they, was, uh, are they, they stopped alive talking. They, that's what i was asking they stopped I, I i can't legally 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 i can't speak to that so your father has passed away but you cannot mm-hmm. speak you can say that but but you can't you can't give us the life status of your brother or your mother 
Mm-mm-mm. These lips are sealed. So it sounds like possibly no one is manning the jewelry store at all, and you can still only like make away with five jewels. I'm sort of coming around to Dr. London's side, but not for any moral reason, because I think you're just an inefficient thief. Okay. Would an inefficient thief... And to call yourself the goat, I mean, I have to take offense to that. I've stolen way bigger goats than that. I'd say you're bad at your job at that point. Well, it's not a job. It's not a job. It's a career. Okay. Dr. London. Again, it's just... You just kind of keep trying to come at me, you know, and I just don't appreciate it. Look, I, what I do, you know, it's not it's not just for the money. It's to make people look good. It's to prove to my family, you know, I'm not a complete f up. And you know, it's to be the goat. Sorry, it's to prove and to that- your family that your family that it just sounds like you're whittling them down. But you're still trying hey. to impress them? Or you're trying to impress like cousins or something? Is it is it not immediate family? No, it's uh you know, it's only my immediate family whose whereabouts I have no idea okay. where they are. So it sounds like okay, I, f- I feel like we're we're we are at a place where maybe we're at a standstill in terms of how much information we can legally get out of you. Not just legally. Mentally, because I have lost a lot of blood. That's true. Like I'm, yes. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure the wound opened back up. Yeah. And no, I'm glad. I mean, you're med. I'm glad we brought out the kiddie pool for you, so that you're, it, it's contained. Um, okay. Well, you know, on that note, though, we have some chores to do. Uh, yeah. Why do you have to bring that up, Doctor London? I know. Um, do you want to explain? Yeah. Yeah. If you could. Uh, So for our new listeners, we sort of neglected everything that we had to do. Everything on our to-do list, all of our chores, our weekly chores, daily chores, do the dishes, take out the trash, push the dog in the pool. Like all of these things that we're supposed to be doing, we weren't. We were very busy with... Neglecting it. uh, Just like not doing it. And so we created this fun little chore wheel that every single week we spin. And whatever chore it lands on... Even if it's the dishes, Dr. London, even if we have to do the dishes. Yeah. If it lands on that, that is the chore we have to do. So we're just going to go ahead and give this bad boy a spin. Uh, Junior and the actually, fifth? Junior, yeah. Yeah, Junior the Fifth, can you give our wheel a bit of a spin? Yeah, I'd love to. You, know, you don't mind if you get any blood on it, right? Oh, yeah, no, it's fine. Here, I can help you up. I can just hoist you up because you... Uh, yeah, there you go. And just go ahead and... Oh, oh no! Not this one. I didn't one. want to have to do this. Oh, do you want to? Sh- do you want to read it? Do you read it? Okay, so we do have to build our own store. Oh no! Yeah. So um, we've been and we've been neglecting this because uh, it's once again one of these things where uh, we we don't work in retail. Um, that's, that's something we haven't really branched into, but we have to make a themed store. So, uh, is it themed after the podcast or you just mean themed in general? What did the mayor request? Is this coming straight from the mayor? Uh, it's coming from the mayor's secretary. So the words like it's mixed up, it's jumbled. Um, I think from what I understand it was, it was a themed store. That's all. It's okay. So it can just be like anything. Yeah. So, okay. So we have to kind of work together here and come up with a theme for the store i mean from the start if you guys don't mind me just uh pitching i mean what about jewels Ooh, i don't huh we could call it run the jewels so i feel like given your experience with jewelry would that be helpful or detrimental to this only one way to find out see okay that far oh yeah this is uh, it's yeah it's the winking the, there's so much winking with both yeah, eyes sorry. but one at a time for our listeners there it, the amount of winks and the amount of um i don't just just obscene gestures as well we i, I, I don't want to end up dead i don't want to end up dead is basically what i'm gonna i don't want to end up in a position where you are not allowed to confirm or deny the life status of myself yeah 
so I, I'm going to have to say I love the idea. And if you want to add, if you want to give away some of your future jewels to the store, I think that'd be really cool. Or if you wanted to bring by Run the Jewels or Jewel, maybe both, and we could get them to do sort of like a talk Ribbon. to me yeah. and you were meant for me sort of collaboration mm. mashup. But uh, I'm going to have to pass on the jewelry thing. I think we should go more like space or cowboys or Ooh. Vikings. Okay. Or I want to stop you right there because space cowboy Vikings is actually kind of a hobby of mine. Oh. You, I mean, you've heard, I've, I like, you're, you're obviously remembering now. But I know. Like, I'm, I'm just, I'm just making fun yeah. of you. Uh, but yeah, so I'm kind of a nerd. I'm really into space cowboy Vikings. Um, I'm really into the sort of the, that transition between Norse mythology and the wild west yeah. and space you know, NASA, all that. So, Oh yeah. It's not the sci-fi aspects of space. It's no. more the logistical aspects like NASA, yeah. Florida, Heavy Houston, on the math. things like that. I yeah. want to, I want to have to calculate with, with a lot of, you know, the different pressure systems and, you know, uh, getting through different, uh, types of matter and the atmosphere. Oh, I love it all. So yeah. Anyway, that plus, you know, Vikings and the North. Yeah. Pillaging. You said, you said Apollo 13 would be your favorite movie if there was at least one Viking in it. Yeah. Which, and like, I've, I've traced it back. I I think one of the actors, or at least one of the crew, has some Viking heritage. Oh. So it's, it's starting to win me over. Tom Hanks. Yeah. Yeah, Tom Hanks. Yeah. I, Tom Hanks. I was, I could, he was, uh, yeah. Cause there's, that's how we, they got him to look like that and from Castaway. Okay. Oh. And that's why he was cast in Castaway, of course. Yeah, because of his Viking heritage. Yeah. Okay, so we've got Tom Hanks as a spokesperson, I feel like, right off the bat. And that's easy to get. We can get I him. Don't, I, I don't know if he's ever... Oh, cowboy stuff. He's Woody. Oh, yes! Yeah. Okay, so Tom Hanks, we, we're going to have him on retainer. I feel like that's going to be most of the budget, unfortunately. Well... Um, but we can still, like, decorate the store and everything. So, I mean, what are we... Are we selling supplies for like space cowboy vikings or are we uh, is it more of a display w- w- yeah or yeah is it more just like yeah fun fun uh collector's item type stuff is it practical stuff like are we selling okay. like dungarees and like astronaut suits well so so the message with spiky helmets from the mayor's secretary was a little ambiguous because they said they want children to be able to play period and then they said the children should be able to eat period and stop the children was the last sentence so i don't know so to me it seems almost like a mcdonald's-esque vibe okay you know you uh you have the children play you feed the children and then you you stop them you stop them that last part i'm not sure but so is it stop or stomp i don't i don't like either answer honestly um no you can't let kids get away with anything so can you I, stop them i know that that's the requirement but i don't like aiming just towards kids when let's take a note from pixar and make it for the whole family make it for adults too okay so, so like maybe some of this viking stuff or whatever let's add a little blood and violence into the mix don't mm-hmm. just like make it kid friendly. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I guess it can be kid- like in the middle of a lake. Yes. And we have Viking funerals at three, five, and seven yeah. p.m. Nice. Yeah. And it's one of those things where I mean, it's it, like like a lot of stores. This is going to be a you know a store with a lake in it, with the Viking funerals. That's going to be part of it. Uh, no outdoor space. That's that's one requirement. There will be no outdoor space. Uh, it's all indoors. Yeah. Yeah, it's like the size of a Bass Pro. Yes, like it's we got to it's got to be a huge amount of space that has a lake in it. Um, uh, you want to sp- and so what uh, about the menu? A rocket if, you, if we're going to be well. feeding but, um, people. Oh yeah, the menu. Uh, what about Tang? Because that's space stuff. Yeah. Uh, let's have. Um, what about like just like boar? I assume Vikings were probably eating a lot of boar. Yeah, yeah. boar and um, uh, food paste for astronaut stuff. Like they yeah. just. 
the, the highly condensed yeah. packaged stuff. And for cowboys, we just have a bunch of hay, right? Yes. Cowboys, that cowboys was eat hay. Usually, what they were going to be munching on. Yeah. So I think if you could do sort of a boar um, food paste sandwich. Oh yeah. No, with I'm, a sort of like hay on there as sort of like for like texture. The side. My stomach okay, is yeah. rumbling. Oh, right I was now. saying on the on the sandwich, the boar oh, sandwich. Oh, that's smart. Yeah, that's smart. Yeah, it's like a, almost like a California burrito, yeah. but well, yeah. like a, it's why we were asked to come up with this. <laughs> so is that is that all we offer? Every kid is eating this boar food paste sandwich. Well, what I do know about kids is that none of them are picky, so I think we're good. Wait, and when I say boar food paste. Do I mean like there's food paste and boar meat on there, or is this boar flavored food paste? Boar Not flavored, flavored, like truly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you yeah. want it to be in paste form. Everything should be in paste form to to give it the space thing. But yes. okay, so this is like a gogurt because I was presenting it as like a sandwich before, but I might be changing gears to sort of a gogurt. And you, the hay is you just kind of munch on it with it. It's like with like a pixie stick comes with like the little white thing. That's your head. Here's here's um, my pitch, my idea, because I, I you know it's dehydrated food, and uh-huh. then we give them a cup of water, you know, and then they they rehydrate it in real time. Okay. Oh, it's like Voila. the little dinosaurs that like grow big. Yeah, and imagine like there's so much appeal to that. Yeah, and it'll get and kids to just, drink water. And then in the back, right? Crazy pitch. A, a Viking cowboy space jewelry store. Wow, okay. I can see the benefits of that. I mean, if we're talking, we're talking bolo ties. We're talking belt buckles. We're talking astronaut bracelets. Mm-hmm. We're talking mm-hmm. Viking shit. Uh, yeah, mo- uh, tiaras. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the little horns, the little diamonds in them. Yeah, moon moon rocks. I, yeah, I mean, you know, I I was reluctant to, to have your help for this junior the fifth but now i think you've talked me into it like we do need to have a jewelry store incorporated yes, thank you thank you yeah, just i think vikings know. would have like rolexes and sort of like high-end watches a lot of times as mm-hmm. they, I, I can confirm they look good. I've, I've done my research yes they did okay, okay so we've got the lake we've got the food item so what I mean what what's left? Uh, oh a yeah, name? like what are we, you gotta have a catchy name. We gotta have what? A name. A catchy name. Oh, that's true. Oh, yeah, we do need a name. With a s with a good slogan. And do we have enough space stuff? I feel like we don't, right? Uh, so maybe we should put like a like an alien in there. Do we have access to one of those? Yeah, we have access to a few, but I was can we have an um just to, to cover all of our bases, can we have an alien that we hire, uh, but have them in an astronaut, full astronaut costume, so that you never actually can tell that they're an alien. Like, it's, it looks like, you know, uh, an Earthling Oh, let's suit. get Paul. You yeah. know, like the little alien, that yeah. the Seth Rogen alien? Uh-huh. Yeah. Holds his breath to disappear. Okay, so we've, if we have Tom Hanks and Paul, I, we're going to have, I mean, there's going to be lines... There's gonna be two person lines like everywhere, just on like every an Arby's. Side of this building. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. But to get to the alien, check it out. This is good. You're gonna to have to find a way to get the alien because he's in the middle of a void. So you have to like, we have to dig like a hundred feet into the earth. Okay, that's oh. just there's like space. So there's just a lot yeah. of space. As long as it isn't technically outdoors, that was the specification. It's so, not. It, yeah, down is fine. Okay. Wow, we really. We really nailed this thing. And so so for the name, uh, it's a Viking space cowboy. Uh, oh, yeah. And do we need to add maybe one more cowboy thing? Because I feel like we haven't done. Can we just have a horse that wanders around? Uh, the horse, I, like I was. That. That's a kind of exactly what I was thinking, was just sort of let it be a horse free for all. Yeah. Just roaming. Just uh, yeah. no saddle or anything. Um, oh, don't touch them. They'll bite you. Yeah. And kick. Yeah. So, okay. That's. Great. That's great. No, I'm, I'm actually starting to think we don't need a. Name. You know what? I'd like to. I'd like to invest. I'm gonna just take this nipple uh, diamond off and just put it right here in the table. Wow. I'd like to. Uh, I'd like to. I'd like to invest. A half L- diamond. Let me just see if it's real here. Okay. Okay. 
Don't no, swallow. I mean, don't swallow. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Dr. London, I think this is a real half diamond. Yeah, sorry about your teeth. <laughs> yeah, it hurts. Okay. Oh, but I wanted to say, if we're doing Tom Hanks, if we're doing Paul, what about also, if we're getting horses, let's get the war horse. Okay, from the war? Just from War Horse, like the Steven Spielberg movie. Okay, okay. The most famous horse of all. Yeah, that sounds great. Um, you know, I don't know how much we'll have left after Tom Hanks and Paul, but... I just gave you half a diamond. That's true. That's a horse worth. That will at least cover Paul, because I think you could trick him that it's worth more than it is. Yeah. Because he's an alien. He doesn't know. That's true. You can say this is worth a trillion dollars, and he'll be like, oh. <laughs> yeah, that does sound like him. Whoa. Wait a second. Can you do that again? <laughs> okay, why do we need... Do we really need... We got a, an impressionist here. Oh. We can save a lot of money. <clears throat> oh. Yeah, we can cut down on a lot of costs if I just pretend to be Paul. And I can be Tom Hanks. Let's hear it. I mean, can you give... Yeah, give me like a... There's a snake in my boots. Uh, look at the snake. There's a snake right in the, the boot. Whoa. Hold on. Wait. Who? One more time. The, uh, look, there's uh, um, in my in my boot. There's a there's a snake. What about now? You're you're confronting Helen Hunt about remarrying after you were lost on the island for so long. Hey, what's up? Uh, did you? Uh, oh, was that? Is he? Are you? At, okay, so so you're with. But you, do you want to still? And see. Okay, that was uh, I mean, yeah. the holy yeah. shit. Okay, yeah. I'm sorry. This is just, I think you've got the part, but just imagine this, okay? You're checking your computer. It's 1998, and Meg Ryan just sent you a, just sent you a message. An, e- an electronic mail. Okay, yeah. Uh, yeah, okay, okay. I'm get- looking at my email, okay. Huh. Whoa. Yeah. Holy f- Holy f- wow. Holy f- I guess that just leaves. So, Junior, can you do the horse then? The war horse? <laughs> wow. Yes. That was. Uh, wow. Is, that is, is a horse movie? that has yes. seen some stuff. Whew. I, yeah. Some war. Some maybe like World War I era stuff. I don't remember what era that movie is from, and I never saw it. Mm-hmm. Unlike me, I, I know it really well, and that's why I've why I've been chiming in so much about it. Well, I feel like we've we've really nailed this thing, and it, I'm sorry just to clarify on the name of the the store. I don't oh. I don't think it needs a name at all. I think people will know. Oh. You, you think just sort of like leaving it ambiguous, or do we want to like at least have a symbol like Prince had when he was the artist mm. formerly known as Prince? Uh, I wouldn't. I would. Yeah. I would. Yeah. We. I like that. I like that. Uh, what about a slogan? A slogan's good. You McDonald's has. Uh, I'm loving it. Burger King has you have it your way. Jack in the box has I'm Jack. So I think it'd be helpful if the slogan reminded people to not touch the horses because they will bite you. Let's just sit. Can it be that? Yeah, I think that works out. And that really conveys. Don't touch the horse. There it is. There it is. Don't touch the horses because they'll bite you. Yeah. And that conveys the Wild West theme. That conveys the Viking and the space. Oh, that's great. Yeah. It's like give the horse some space. He's going to yes. bite you. And we'll have to get we'll have to give you a viking funeral It'll be wild. after because the horse is going to kill you. Hey, okay, okay. Now you t- put it in the slogan uh in the song theme I just did. That whole thing. Da 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 don't touch the horse because if you do it might have to kill you and then you're going to end up dying and we'll have to do a viking funeral cuz you will be dead. Okay. We fucking nailed it. Wow, we're good. I, the mayor's going to be so happy for a second before he comes up with another task. But you know what? Appeasing him day by day is really what we're having to deal That's with now. That's the point of this show. That's the only reason we do this show is yeah. for our one listener, the mayor. Yeah. Uh, which, you know, he pays up for the Patreon. So it's yeah, I can hardly complain. He's the only one doing the $1 million tier. Yeah. Hold on. He's got a million dollars? Uh, the, well, I think the mayor he, he has, has a lot more than that. He has less than a million dollars now. And yeah. cash, jewels? Uh, it's probably mostly in stock. And tied up in Patreon, really. And a lot <sighs> tied up into Patreon. Bummer. And uh, I think a pyramid scheme that he's been operating. Yeah. But he's at the top. Oh, yeah. No, he'll be fine. 
Yeah. So um, I guess on that note, we should kind of uh, bring things to a close here. Uh, oh, sorry, sorry. We have to destroy the chore wheel. Because um, oh, yeah. every week, of course, we have to change it to adapt to the new chores. So, um, Dr. London, do you want to just shoot it with your gun? Yeah, yeah. So I, and I, you know, I don't really usually carry a gun, but for the podcast and for the, for the chore wheel, obviously. Uh, so here we go. Ow! Oh, it just, did it, it hit the bullet that was already in there? Yeah, it ricocheted and hit, hit my leg again. I'm bleeding. Okay, well, maybe we'll figure out a hospital. Anyway, um, so, so chore's done. Uh, I feel like we're, we're right at the end here, so um, thank you so much to, uh, to Junior the Fifth, Cameron. And is there any way for our listeners to uh, keep up with you, hear more from you, or from you know anyone you're a fan of? Yeah, uh, you can uh, follow someone I'm a big fan of on Instagram and other social medias uh, at uh, Paul Aredia, H-E-R-E-D-I-A, on Instagram. Uh, do that same name backwards, Aredia underscore Paul on Twitter. And if you want to tune in every Friday to a show called Fake News, feel free to. We're also on TikTok. Okay, and where's that show found? Um, YouTube and Facebook. Facebook and Periscope. Okay, okay, and it's it's all under your name or whatever. Oh, uh, fake news comedy, yeah. Okay, fake news comedy. Okay, um, all right. So that was uh, Junior the Fifth, Cameron. Uh, thank you to you know our guest. Thank you to our producer, Cameron. Uh, tough to tell you guys apart at this point, but uh, uh, thank you to Did You Do in the House? Do you take cryptocurrency? I could shoot you a few bits of a coin. Do you take cryptocurrency? I could shoot you a few bits of a coin. bits of a coin. My name is Dr. London Smith, and this has been the Jock Doc Podcast. See ya.